I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. Uh, tonight I've got a number of things to show you. So I've got a project that I'm working on that is an Amigurumi dragon, and I'm part of the way through it, and I thought I would just hold the assembly and start to kind of piece the parts together tonight. Um, and then I wanted to show you the pattern page uh, that's on Ravelry and show you some of the options that I've got left to pick. The other thing that I've got to show tonight is uh, a couple weeks ago, I featured this yarn that I had bought from Scotland uh, that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with, but I really wanted to make something interesting out of it. And I've actually found what I'm going to make, and I was going to show you guys that as well. Uh, and the final thing, and the thing that I'm probably going to start with, is the Lytherco box. Uh, this is a subscription box that I get, and I just, uh, I guess I like to unbox it on stream, and just kind of something fun to do. Uh, it's not sponsored or anything like that, it's just a box that I buy and pay for, and I just like to open it with you guys. So uh, I'm probably going to start with that. Uh, but actually, first I will say welcome and thank you everyone who's joining. I know we've missed a couple of streams. It's been really kind of a brutal couple weeks as far as work goes. Um, I'm not sure why it's been so many late nights, but it's been a lot. And so I just have not had the time or the energy to stream come Thursday night. But welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. And hopefully things will be a little bit smoother sailing and I'll be able to make more of these live streams on time and on the right night. Um, Looks like Mary's saying hello. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Lytherco box. Uh, so I get the deluxe box, which has... I can open this up. The little stickers I always ruin, but get this opened up. Ooh. So the deluxe box has a ball of yarn, and this one actually has a pom pom, and it's a little bit stuck to the tape, but I recovered it. Um, let's tape this back up. So the deluxe box has a skein of yarn. This is called Butterfly. It's a worsted weight yarn. It's 100% superwash merino. It is 218 yards or, a, or for 100 grams. Um, and it's actually really pretty. It's uh, teal and natural, like, beige white color. And then there's some pink, and it sort of fades into, like, a dark pinky purple. Um, very much my color taste and choice there. Um, there is a pom-pom, uh, which... Will look interesting with that. I'm not sure how I feel about the black with the uh, pink and teal, but uh, we'll see how that turns out. There is a button with a butterfly. Let's switch cameras so that it's, if I hold my hand still, there's a button with a butterfly. And, ooh. There is a pin with a butterfly. It's a pretty butterfly. Like a, it's clear plastic with kind of like a mint tinge to it. And then, oh wow, it keeps going. There is also a uh, stitch marker with a butterfly. So butterfly is obviously the theme, uh, the butterfly named yarn and then lots of butterfly accessories. So a button, a pin, a stitch marker, and a uh, pom-pom. And then I also get the natural hook with mine. So that is natural wood. The other option is a colored wood. Um, and this is a eye hook. Eye hook is actually my favorite size in the larger hooks. Um, I have a tendency to use an e-hook and an i-hook. Like, I don't know why those are the ones that I always default to, but they are. And this is a pretty nice feeling 
Um, I showed a couple weeks ago all the different variety in the shapes of the hand-turned hooks. And this kind of bubbly shape is my favorite. Um, I usually can find a nice spot for my pinky to rest that's not too, uh, too big. I, I don't like it to come around the bigger ball part. Um, but there's usually a nice spot for my pinky to rest on these bubble-shaped ones. Um, so normally the Lathico box is one ball of yarn, one hook, one gift, and a pattern. And this came with four gifts this time, or four little accessories. Um, and then the pattern comes in a little booklet. There are two different options in the yarn. So you can either get a wool-based yarn or a cotton-based yarn if you have wool allergies or prefer cotton. Um, and then you can get the box with or without yarn. You can get it with or without the hook. You can get both things. You can get just the pattern. There's a whole bunch of different options. Um, but the cotton box comes with uh, one one ball of yarn that's in cotton. The wool comes with one uh, skein of yarn that's in uh, wool. They each have a pattern that is sort of designed for them, but then generally they're interchangeable. Um, so it looks like there are... So it looks like it's an anniversary box. Um, so there's... The pin is a two-year anniversary butterfly pin. Uh, the stitch marker is there were there were six different options. I got the red one. Uh, the pom pom, there were ten different colors. The butterfly button was in all of the deluxe boxes, and then there is the natural hook or the funfetti hook. I'm not generally a big fan of the funfetti hooks because they're sometimes kind of. Uh, bright and loud color combinations, but this one in magenta is pretty cool. Um, a lot of times they're two-tone. They'll be like yellow and black or, you know, blue and, you know, sort of a, I don't know, like I've seen just a lot of, they're a lot of bright and I, I tend to like the wood quite a bit. So, um, and then the pattern, let me see if I can turn the page so that I'm not showing off the full pattern, but there's a hat pattern, a beanie, um, and I imagine you can go, uh, the pom-pom is meant to attach to the top of the hat as well. It's not pictured, but there are instructions on this side that I can see that indicate you should attach the pom-pom. And then there is a cowl. That does not show the pattern. Um, and the cowl has... The cowl has the button attached. So you can see there's the little button there. Um, so the pom-poms for the hat, the button is for the cowl. And if I can tip this just a little bit, there's a little bit more detail on this picture without showing off the pattern. Um, since these are part of the subscription, I don't want to show the written words on the pattern. But there is the other picture. Um, and you can see the button is just like an accent piece on there. Okay. And then there's also an offer in here for earning boxes and there's an offer for online videos as part of another uh, part of the, the subscription and it'll walk you through how to do all of the, uh, the different, um, what do I want to say? It'll walk you through how to do all of the different steps in the cowl and the hat. So that is the little collection there. Um, and that is my Lytherco box. I'm pretty excited about this yarn. It's, it's actually one. So part of the fun in this subscription is you don't really know what you'll get. Um, I know that I'm getting wool yarn, but I never know if it's going to be colors that I would normally pick myself um, or if it's going to be patterns that I would normally choose. I have found that there's a pretty good variety in the patterns. So there's been everything from hats and cowls to table runners, earrings, stuffed animals, um, all kinds of different things. So um, 
a lot of different options and and whatnot in in the box. So it's been pretty fun overall, and I really like getting the hooks uh, because they have clover amour hooks as the base of them um, or the the hook portion. Uh, they're hooks that I'll actually use. So I pretty much only use clover amour hooks. And I think what they do is just snip the top part of the hook off and seat it into the the hand turned handle. So um, I've been I've been a big fan of those because they've got the very slippery clover amour metal. So anyway, um, so the next thing that I wanted to show was the pattern that I picked out to go with my yarn. So. I explained last time I ordered this yarn from Scotland, um, specifically from the Outer Hebrides of Scotland, and I got these two different colors, this uh, gray and the reef. So the gray is called Storm Gray, and then this blue is called Reef, and these were the two colors that I had picked out. I got two balls of each. They're each 50 grams, so I have 200 grams total, um, and I really wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but it's a really nice... Um, it's coarse, but it's not scratchy. So it feels like it's going to be really warm. It is not super wash, so it will felt if I'm not careful. Um, and I found a really cool pattern, and so I want to show that um, on Ravelry. And so I will open that up. And we'll display my screen in just a second. Okay. So this is the pattern that I'm, I've am i decided to go with. I think it looks really cool. Uh, it's, it is a crochet pattern, even though it looks relatively knit-like. Um, and so this is the pattern that I've decided to go with. It is called Fastnet by Anne Michelle Phelan. Um, there's a couple different pictures of it, but it's a relatively interesting pattern. It's got a lot of mosaic, uh, crochet. And so I just kind of wanted to show this off. I found this pattern designer. Uh, she's got a lot of different crochet patterns that all look very knit. So if I sort her patterns, 11 of them are crochet. And you can see there's a number, like these mittens also have a very knit look. You can see the little Vs that are very characteristic of knitting. Not that you always want your crochet to look like knitting, but sometimes, um, especially in clothing, I find if you really want it to look like cloth, people are, are generally familiar with knit cloth. So, or, or woven, but but knitting tends to be... Uh, what people are are most familiar with. So there's a number of different patterns in here, but that uh, fast net pattern really caught my eye. I was looking for a mosaic type pattern. And so that's what I'm going to work on. And I just thought I would share that with you guys tonight. Um, it does call for, I think, the 200 grams. So it's 50 grams... Oh, I actually might be short here. I misread this, I think. I might have to order one more ball. So this is two balls of light beige and three balls of deep ocean instead of, I. for some reason, I thought I had read that it was two and two. Um, it makes a little bit more sense as three and two because I thought it looked more blue heavy, but I might have to order a third ball of that. So anyway, it is a paid pattern. Um, but I, I never mind paying for patterns that are unique and that I don't want to figure out myself. So um, this is the pattern that I am going to go with, and I might have to order another ball, it looks like. Um, the other thing that I want to show tonight is... is I am working on this dragon pattern. And I've got a bunch of the pieces in a pile next to me. It was the thumbnail for the video. Um, and 
what I've got here is I've got the base of the body, the legs, the head, um, everything all done except the sort of accessory pieces. So there's a number of different options in the wings. There's a couple of different options for accent pieces. And so I kind of just wanted to talk through a little bit uh, what the uh, what options you guys think look the coolest and, and where we're going to go or where I'm going to go with that. Uh, Jessa's saying that the uh, the Lytherco box is very pretty and that the cowl is amazing. I really think the cowl is awesome. I don't know how much work it's going to be. I haven't really gotten into the pattern yet, um, but I'm pretty excited to find out because I think it's going to turn out really cool, uh, hopefully. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I will continue to update as I work on it. So this dragon I started making for uh, a close family friend, and I um. So like I said, I've got the body portion. Um, here's the little body. Kind of looks like the Loch Ness monster right now. Um, and then I've got a number of pieces all over the table. Here's all my pieces. And so I was going to kind of do a little bit of assembly tonight and just sort of talk and pin and kind of work on this. Um, and then I wanted to talk through some of the uh, accessory pieces. So I'm just about out of this base yarn that I'm using. So I use the whole body. And then these are like the thigh pieces. Um, these are the back feet pieces. And then I've got the front legs. And so all of the remaining pieces I have to make out of an accent color. And I have two separate colors. I've got this dark purple, which I think I'm going to do most of it out of um, because it matches really well. And then I've got this silver, which doesn't match quite as well, but I think accents pretty nicely. So I can go back to the yarn store and buy another ball of this. They had plenty of it, but I was thinking that the purple might be cool. So I'm going to do the wings and all the accent pieces in the purple or the silver. Um, I might just do the silver with this like belly portion that needs to be crocheted. Um, if we go back to the pattern here, uh, I'll kind of show a couple of the options. So in this pattern, you can choose this ear shape here. Or you can do these more fin-like shapes on the side of the head. Um, there is also a pointy scale that can go from the tip of the tail all the way down the back of the dragon. Uh, there might be a better picture of that, but you've got, you basically have that ridge down the back. There's also this belly band portion that can be added. Um, the dragon can sit like this. This is the shape that I chose. It can also be standing. Um, the pattern's something on the order of 100 pages with all the different options. Uh, there are also these sort of goat horns um, that are an option instead of the ear fin pieces um, or the little... There's these frilly ears, or there's just these, like, loop ears. Um, and so there's all these different options, and the pattern comes with a bunch of different options. And then there are actually add-on packs that you can get as well from this designer. Um, there's some eye decorations in this one. Uh, much bigger fins on this one. Um, and then I think there are two different options on the wings. Uh, if I go back to the detail page, you can see these wings have this like little thumb on the edge here uh, where you know, all of the ones on that page have the little thumb. Um, but let's see. These wings on this purple one do not. They are continuous through. So... There's a whole bunch of different options. This is also a standing version of the dragon rather than the sitting version. Um, there's a lot of different options and a lot of different combinations. So these have the bigger frillier uh, ears and some head detailing, but no back ridge, no belly band, and the wings with no thumb. So... 
there are a ton of different combinations. So I was kind of wondering what you guys thought and what you thought maybe I should add to the dragon. I'm leaning towards these frill things instead of the little loopy ears. I kind of like these side frilly gill things. Um, I'm not sure about which type of wing to make. I'm not sure which are going to be easier. So you build the whole wing structure out of this uh, paper wrapped wire. So you have to kind of make like a skeleton and then crochet like around it. So this is some of it and I've got more upstairs. Uh, but the whole dragon gets a whole backbone, and so you can kind of uncurl the whole thing here. Um, it's actually a pretty long toy. Uh, and it looks like my tail is slipping. Kind of refeed that in there. Okay. I've uncurled it a couple times tonight. Uh, but this floral wire is pretty forgiving. And, um... Uh, you can't curl it indefinitely, but you can curl it a lot. And so you can kind of shape your dragon into whatever you want here. So right now, like I said, it looks like the Loch Ness Monster because it has no limbs. And so I was going to work on doing some pinning while I talk to you guys. Uh, let's see. Lucy said she's missed the live streams. I've missed doing them too. I've just had, like I said, I've been so busy. Um, and work's really just kind of kept me... Really busy in the evenings as well. Um, just went yarn shopping and started two blankets for my daughters. I've been planning I crochet stuff for friends but not fa and family, but not them. Uh, yeah, it's really easy to... I, I would say not... Er, it's really easy to not crochet for your immediate family and for yourself. A lot of people have a bad habit of never making anything for themselves. Um... For kids, I really like to do uh, crochet edge blankets because they go fast and they hold up really well and and you can kind of do them often and really tailor them to what kids are interested like that month or that, you know, six months because kids' interests change so fast, whatever cartoon that there is their favorite at that time. And so I really like to do crochet edge blankets, but um, a really nice whole crochet blanket, I'm sure they will really appreciate. Uh, let's see. Jessa said, that's great. There's so many options for the one pattern. I think the silver belly would look great. I think that's what I'm leaning towards. Uh, like I said, this yarn isn't a perfect like match for this, but I think it goes pretty well. Um, if I hold like that, I think the silver kind of pops against it. And I don't think looks too out of place. I might have to crochet the belly and see how it looks. Because I'm not totally sold that it's going to go. I definitely know that the purple goes. Purple's a really good match. So, like I said, I'm, I think I'm going to start by doing some pinning here. Um, so, to start with, I've got the two legs. The legs have a little, like, nub of the floral wire sticking out. Uh, and the floral wire goes all the way through the leg. And so I'm going to just kind of pop that in. I've had this in a couple of times, and I've got a bunch of pins here. And if you guys have questions or want to talk about anything in particular... Um... Oh, okay. So Lucy's saying that her her girls are 17 and 19. So that makes it a little bit easier. By 17 and 19, uh, kids are have their interests pretty, uh, a lot more firmed up at that point. Um, what I was saying was crochet edge blankets. So what you do is you grab a piece of fleece. Um, can really be any size, but generally you want it large enough uh, for for the, the size blanket that you want. So if you just want like a little car seat blanket um, for like a baby gift, you can use like a yard of yarn. If you want a blanket for somebody who's 17 to 19, uh, you would probably want closer to two yards. But basically you just take a rotary cutter and you, you 
use a skip cutter blade to punch holes for you. And then you crochet into those holes. You just do a row of single crochet and then you can put whatever edge you want all the way around. And so those are, are my favorite because they're quick and easy because the bulk of the blanket is fleece. And then the uh, the rest of the blanket is... has Well, the outside of the blanket has a crochet edge. So if you, if for example, you had a, one of your kids going off to college and you wanted to do like a college blanket, but you didn't want to make a whole crochet, like graph gan type of thing, you could get some of the college fleece and then you would, uh, you, you could crochet around the edge there and you wouldn't have to make the whole blanket knowing that that might not be. Not that they won't be interested in their college, but they might not be as interested in a couple of years to have a giant blanket of that, uh, of that, like, much detail. So, um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just pinning the limbs on, and I'm feeling like maybe the front legs are a little overstuffed. I might need to pull some stuffing, because they don't... They look like they're going to be really wide on the body. Um, even even as I'm like pushing them in against the body, they're feeling very broad shouldered here. <laughs> so, uh, and then I've got this thigh partially pinned on over here. Um, and I'm going to flip this here and pin this other thigh on. Um, I also think the thigh might be overstuffed. Gone a little crazy on the stuffing, I guess. I'm used to uh, amigurumi that you have to really stuff to get shape and, like, structure. But since this has wire backbone all over the place, uh, that's really just not necessary. So, and I might have this upside down. I might have the wrong side up here. And then I've got these feet. And they need to be pinned. I might pull this off and pin this way. Um, Lucy says, thanks for the ideas. You are welcome. Um, I pretty much always recommend... Crochet edge blankets. They're really one of my favorite easy to make gifts. Um, I'm also kind of a procrastinator, and so they're really good for last minute things. Um, they're also particularly good for if you don't know if the person is going to take care of them. So maybe a coworker that you want to give something, but you don't want to assume that they're going to hand wash a nice baby blanket um, or something like that with a newborn baby or something um, where you're just not sure. Um, then, then crochet edge blanket is nice because the fleece is washable and if you use an acrylic around the outside, it'll be washable and it'll be really easy to make. You can make it quickly last minute. And... It's super easy to take care of. Okay. I'm mostly feeling like I'm just going to get stabbed by a lot of pins here. So once I get all of the legs pinned on and sewn on, then I can add all of the external pieces, or the, not the external, but the additional pieces, um, all of those, 
extras that I just showed. Maybe we go like this. I think I need to remove stuffing. Because I'm having a hard time even getting like the limbs close enough to pin. That's not quite as bad. I can actually get it to stay. It's like running the pins into the dragon's spine here. Okay. That's a little better. You can see, like, flattened out against the body, um, it's making a little bit more sense here rather than this one where it's really offset, I've kind of gotten it flattened properly. Let's see if I can do a little bit better here. If you guys have other questions, I can talk and pin at the same time. So if you've got other crochet or yarn, um, not really much of a knitter, I could talk a little tiny bit about weaving. Um, but that's about it. But I'm always happy to talk yarn in general. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep pinning on my dragon. And I'm trying to turn this to the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. But I'm kind of crushing this leg against the dragon's body and putting an excessive amount of pins to hold it flat against here. The idea being that you want to make sure that it'll sit nice and level um, once all of its limbs are on. So there's a little bit better idea of how the front leg should go on with it kind of nice and snug against the body rather than as crazy lizard kind of looked like uh, Kom Komodo dragon or whatever before. Um, so if I go all the way to this position, then it would be the standing version, but I want it to sit. And I can bend the legs a little bit into the right shape, but I don't want to like curl the feet back. I want the feet to stay kind of flush, which means I might have to rotate how they're pinned so that they stay flat on the ground. Okay, there's some nice flat feet. And I've got the legs properly pinned like this, and then I just need... I think they're a little overstuffed. I think I probably have to remove some stuffing out of these thighs. Dragon's got thick thighs <laughs> but you can get kind of a general sense of it turning into a dragon uh, let me back it up this way so you can kind of start to see that it's actually dragon shaped so, um, I kind of don't hate the, the little spots made by the pins <laughs> Those all go away, but they kind of uh, are interesting. I don't like that pin. What about here? There. Nice little spots. So, um, that's really what I wanted to work on tonight. Uh, I don't know if you guys have more questions or things you want to talk about, but this is really what I wanted to show was my dragon up. Oh, there, you lost a leg. Uh, I think I'm going to have to probably pull all the pins and pull a bunch of stuffing out of these thighs before I just end up stuck like a pin cushion here. Because um, I think that they're too heavy. And luckily I didn't sew anything shut except the feet. 
on this because I had a feeling the instructions said to understuff, and I thought I did, but I think it needs to be understuffed even further. So this is about half stuffed for Renami Gurumi piece, but anyway, I, th I think I still overdid it a little bit, and I'll have to pull some stuff in. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to give that cowl a try here in the next few days. I'm going to start working on that. And I'm going to keep working on this dragon. Uh, my original intent was to make it for a birthday present, but I think I'm just going to hold it and give it as a Christmas present and buy myself just a little bit more time to finish working on it. So... It's a little bit more involved with the wings and having to, like, make a skeleton out of all of the floral wire. And so it's not just as simple as make a dragon uh, and sew it together. There's There's a little bit more going on. So, but I think it will be worth it in the end because it's going to look pretty awesome. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, trying to think what else I wanted to talk about. Um. I do have to say a, a number of people have mentioned before on the stream that they want to learn how to do amigurumi or they want to get better at them. Um, and I, I have to say the thing that made this turn out the coolest and what I really regret not doing sooner is learning how to do an invisible decrease. I mentioned this with my mermaid, uh, who I, not sure where she's at, but she's got, uh, she kind of looks like she's got a little bit of acne going on because I didn't do an invisible decrease. And so the decrease is sort of bumped out. And her face has got a little bit of bumpy texture to it. And it's fine, but it could be better. And I learned how to do an invisible decrease after making that. Uh, and I really wish that I had learned ahead of time because it's pretty easy to do. But it just is a little bit of a tweak and you put a little bit less yarn into that space. And it makes it bump out a lot less. And so I think... That if you're looking to learn more or do more with Amigurumi, I would learn to do a magic circle really, really well. And I would learn to do an invisible decrease. Everything else is just keeping your tension tight and doing the same types of stitches that you learn to do with any other type of crochet. So, um, with all that being said, like I said, it's it's been a couple of uh, long weeks at work, and so I might go ahead and wrap up for the evening, um, and hopefully we'll be able to stream a lot longer next week. It, we're coming in on Halloween next week, and so maybe I'll find something uh, Halloween-y to do uh, for the stream next week. But if you've got ideas, I'd love to hear those, uh, or maybe I'll make up pumpkin or a bat or something small i don't know I'm, i'll try and think of something um or maybe we'll branch out into the science portion of uh the experiments in crafting and do some sort of chemistry or experiment um sort of a mad scientist that's always fun to do around halloween um but otherwise i'm not sure so we'll see what we end up doing uh, I guess, like I said, I'm, I think I'm going to wrap up for the evening, but thank you all for joining me tonight. And, uh, we try to stream on Thursday nights at 8 PM central. I know we were running a little bit late tonight, but if we are late or if we're going to cancel the stream, I put that on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and on the YouTube page. So, uh, if you follow me at Experiments and Crafting on Facebook or Instagram, uh, you can find that information there, or you can find it on the community page of the YouTube channel, like my YouTube channel. So uh, if 
we're canceling, if we're running late, something like that, I try and post there so that everyone knows what's going on. Otherwise, if you are subscribed to the channel, you should get notifications once we go live or if we schedule a live stream. Um, all you have to do is hit the little bell to uh, subscribe and then you, um, there's a little drop down that says notifications or a little drop down for notifications. You, you change it from personalized to all and hopefully they send you all the notifications, but it turns out more often than not, you don't get everything. So um, thank you all for joining me tonight and have a great rest of your week and I will see you next week. Bye.